There are new developments in the Russ movie set shooting. A motion filed by prosecutors this week claims that an unnamed witness said the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, transferred a small bag of cocaine after returning from a police interview. The witness alleges that exchange happened the same day as the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. I'm joined now by Misty Maris for her legal perspective. She's a defense attorney and a trial attorney. All right, so we just heard this comes uh, after prosecutors charged her with tampering with evidence in this case. What could this mean for her case going forward? So, Sarah, this is really relevant to the involuntary manslaughter charges. I say that because we know that this charge is based off transferring cocaine on the set that day. That's the allegation by the prosecutors. We're not seeing a charge for possession of the cocaine or use of the cocaine. We're seeing a tampering charge. Now, remember, she's charged with involuntary manslaughter. That means that she knew of a risk on that set that day and ignored the risk. That's what prosecutors have to prove. So we've seen that the prosecutors intend to show that she was hung over on that day. And now, with this new tampering charge, they're going to be talking about her state of mind. She's transferring this cocaine because she does not want to be caught with it. So it's more relevant to the involuntary manslaughter standard than the actual tampering charge. It's part of the bigger picture and ultimately proving their case. Now, her attorney, you know, to be fair to her, calls these charges character assassination. But does that really matter, th that term? It's not a legal term. And does it matter in this case? Correct, Sarah, you make a great point. So of course her lawyers are going to contest this. First of all, this investigation has been going on for 20 months and her defense attorneys very rightfully, I'm a defense attorney myself, uh, are not uh, accustomed to surprise. You know, the courtroom isn't like the movies. There is no surprise right. there. The prosecutors are required to turn over evidence. So what her attorneys are arguing is that this is really speaking to improper character evidence as opposed to evidence that would be relevant mm. to the charges. So really, whether or not it is a viable charge is going to depend on the strength and, and uh, veracity of the witness that prosecutors intend to produce. So it's a little premature to say whether or not this is really some sort of striking new claim or whether or not the defense has an argument that perhaps it should even be excluded. They will need the underlying information before they can make that point. It's a little bit more, it seems you're saying, for the court of public opinion, not necessarily uh, for what actually happens in court. Um, you know, these are new charges that, that, that have been brought up uh, against her, in, including the first one, which was a manslaughter charge, as you mentioned. How does this affect Alec Baldwin? Because those charges, the manslaughter charges were dropped against him. Could this mean that there could be more charges coming if the prosecutors see fit? So you make a great point because those charges were dismissed without prejudice. And without prejudice means that they can always be resurrected should there be evidence that supports bringing a charge. So as far as Alec Baldwin is concerned, right now he's in the clear. I would expect him to be on the prosecutor's witness list uh, for this trial because, of course, he is a critical person mm. in the context of what happened on that day. And in fact, would be beneficial for the prosecutors to talk about how Hannah Gutierrez Reed and what her role was on that set. Remember, he was also a producer, not just an actor who was ultimately holding the gun that caused this tragic accident. So uh, I do think that he could potentially strike up a non-prosecution deal before taking the witness stand. As an attorney, that's what I would be seeking. And if the prosecutors do believe that his testimony is critical, you could see that uh, in writing, which would preclude charges against him. But right now, if there were to be new evidence, he could ultimately be charged. And remember, there's another person here, David Halls, who did plead guilty, who would I, I would expect to be testifying at the trial as well. Misty Maris, girl, you broke it all down for us, and I really appreciate you coming on the show on this holiday weekend. Thank you so much. Sarah, always great to see you.